so uh, let's begin. Today we are going to talk about pointers. Okay, so uh, pointers is what we are going to um, discuss today. Now, uh, what I want to ask you uh, from the scale of we are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people over here right now listening to me, and I wish it was more than this. But uh, uh, I'm gonna give you uh, um, kind of a poll right now. I'm gonna ask you to 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 based on your comfort with pointers, give me a a, a percentage on how much do you know how how good you are at. Uh, uh, in pointers. So I'm going to put something like this. And I'm going to make it anonymous so you can comfortably say it. Uh, And I'm talking about when I'm when I'm polling this right now. So I'm gonna say, how good are you with pointers? And I'm talking about C pointers from C language. That that far. I mean, like I want you I want you to tell me how good you are in understanding pointers. And please give me your response. It's an anonymous poll. I just want to see how good you are with pointers. All right, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so this is what the poll looked like. So you can see right now over there. So 70% uh, they say I'm very good with it, and 30% uh, I'm saying that uh, uh, I know some. Okay. Um, <clears throat> therefore, what I will do, what I will ask you. Uh, to please, uh, so I'm not. I wanted to review points. So let me ask another question over here. How many of you want me to do an overview of pointers, uh, IPC 144 style? So, um, uh, so would you like an overview of pointers? Let's put it like this. Would you like an overview of pointers? This is gonna. Uh, uh, throw us a little behind so I may not finish it now then and it's gonna leak to the next week but uh, I just want to know what what would you like to, would you like me to explain what pointers are as I explain it to IPC 144 students or you're good would you like me to do it All right, <clears throat> my I t voted no from chat view. <laughs> I should have said, say, but but so it's more than sixty percent. It's around seventy percent are saying yes. So I will do it then. So I'm gonna bring the pointers, uh, um, <coughs> the pointers uh, uh, slides up from my from. Uh, I think I have it in OP two four four two. I'm just gonna go notes archive probably over here. Uh, PowerPointer stuff, classes, memory allocation, DMA, pointers, and pointers and arrays. So these are the good two good. Th so <coughs> copy. So please bear in mind that this, what you see right now, is a uh, uh, the presentation that I do for, I used to do for IPC 144 a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but now I do it for OP 244 and 345 if they want. <clears throat> so, so, what pointers are? Let's actually go through it 
and uh, uh, start presentation. Perfect. So um, <clears throat> uh, I get, I'm going to poll you and please uh, uh, f um, respond to it as, as we go as quickly as possible so, so I can uh, move to the next topic as I'm going. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the, the array that the, the computer the, the, the memory that you have in your computer is a ginormous array of characters. A character in C language is essentially a byte. So character and byte are identical things. We have bytes set up in computers uh, in in uh, in computers because um, um, we we came up with a byte as a package of eight bits because it uh, it's the best it's suitable it's the best su uh, it's the it's big enough integer number to be able to encode English characters, which is 256. So 127 was enough. That's text. And then they said, okay, 100, uh, it's seven bits, it's not symmetric, so let's make it eight bits. So they, at early stages, they use the first seven bits. That's why still the Windows applications you are, when you are uploading and downloading files to a Linux environment, you should, you should select your, if your FTP is text or binary. It means is it using the first seven bits for the ASCII code or the X. So it, nowadays everything is not only um, <coughs> binary, which means the eight bytes is used to encode the the characters. Though I mean ASCII code, uh, but also they extended it to uh, <coughs> two bytes to have a universal thing for all the character set that we have in computer science. So every single cell that you see over here is essentially a byte on your computer. And as you see, I'm saying starting from memory zero, it comes right up to uh, some place in your memory that uh, your program is sitting and is working and I'm just putting a big number in here but I'm putting the first three numbers as we are going so we understand what memory is and how big the memory is it depends on the money in your pocket how much memory you can put and the limit of your uh, motherboard and your CPU to accept how many gigabytes of RAM you may have four or you may have 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM whatever it is so this is the memory that we have are we okay with understanding what memory is so when we talk about address <coughs> so when we are talking about address what we are saying are actually the sequence number of the bytes in memory so when I say address 103 it's act actually the address <coughs> 23 million four four hundred twenty three thousand one hundred and three Three a third byte in memory, which uh, is an immediate jump, and the time to get to that thing is zero for us. We have immediate access to every single byte that we have in memory. So, an address of the byte is essentially the sequence number of the byte in memory. Obviously, it's a positive integer number. Are we okay with this? So, essentially, when you create a variable somewhere in your application you are telling to your compiler to ask the operating system to give you uh, the amount of memory you need to be able to fit that thing in it and you name it so the compiler knows where that thing is so when you are saying integer var essentially when you are or say double var it's someplace else it puts memory in it uh, it, it occupies memory and now in OP345 we know that that value that you see is aligned with an integer that is coefficient of the size of the of the variable so if you are putting an integer it's 108 you cannot have an integer as, at 107 and if when you have a <coughs> uh, double it should be a coefficient of 8 which is 132 you cannot have it on 131 and uh, therefore you can have access to it and when you say that variable is set to 98765 essentially it changed that to binary representation in four bytes of that thing and puts it in var or if you put some double number it converts it to double and puts it in memory wherever it, it goes are we okay with this all right so so uh so now, what do we, like, because we are dealing with these 
variables and the name of the variables are local to the scope that we are we need to be able to pass the address of a variable as you see over here is 132 and here is 108 we need to pass the address of what we have can I draw on this I think I can uh, yeah so so in here the address of this double value is 132 and the address of the, the variable is 108 so essentially the beginning of four bytes of var and the beginning of eight bytes of dvar because of the var and dvar that we have over here i actually uh are actually um what shall we call it um uh, uh local variables the names that we have over here these names are not uh, these names are not um, accessible outside of the uh, the scope that they are in we need to pass the address out for that we need to have a specific type that is that we call it pointer so the pointers that we are talking about essentially these pointers these are the ones that are uh, holding uh, the addresses and pointers are the si a size of an integer as you see over here when you actually uh, define a pointer it is an integer whose job is to hold the address of other variables so if I say pointer is 102 essentially I'm saying that my pointer is pointing to the location 102 in memory and if I say it's so but but that 102 doesn't mean anything because it just uh, nowhere so I need to m put an address over here that actually belongs to me if I try to access 102 I'm gonna get segmentation fault and you all have experienced that many many times so we don't want that so I have to put the proper address in here and because of that fact I need to be able to extract the address of a variable which is essentially PTR address of a variable so I can say PTR is equal address of a var so that variables address will be extracted and put in PTR and if I want to access the variable using the pointer I have to say target of PTR is 2345 so therefore as a consequence of requesting to put 2345 in target of PTR, actually the var will be set to 2345. Are we okay down to this point? And therefore, um, and therefore I can actually print the value. If I print the value, the output will be 2345. And if I print the target of PT PTR, it's again 2345. And, I tr and if I try to print the PTR itself as an unsigned integer, what's going to get printed is the address in vi which var is sitting at. Are we okay with this? All right, now that we know this, um, let's see now that we know this let's see what happens if I want to make that pointer now point to the double value double variable so if I say over here <coughs> uh, PTR is equal to address of, address of dvar and then I set try to set the target of of uh, of uh, that uh, what should we call it pointer to the double value how does the pointer PTR know that this is now 8 bytes and not 4 bytes in a previous settings when we set it it set the 4 bytes to the 108 but in here it has to set the 8 bytes and it is with the information that we have which is just a pointer with the information that we have that is just a pointer we do not give enough information to compile it to tell what is the size of the target in which I want you to put this variable in therefore this becomes impossible because of this fact I cannot just say integer pointer what I need I cannot just say pointer I have to specify what that pointer is supposed to point to so instead of saying pointer I have to say integer pointer PTR and now I can say address of var goes to PTR and therefore when I set the target it knows it's supposed to overwrite the four bytes and if I want to deal with a double I have to set double pointer DPTR and then now if when I do that the address of double 
goes a double pointer goes into DPTR and when I say target of DPTR is equal to a double because the pointer is of a type double it knows what's the target size therefore it's gonna actually put it right in there and this is only possible if I actually write these things properly like this are we okay down to this point All right, so it's because of this fact that I can actually uh, uh, print it and, and do everything that I want to do with, uh, with individual uh, values. I think I actually made a boo-boo in here and I have to fix it. Where is my source for the... I think it's here. not the one yeah I don't know why I have it like this yeah that's how it's supposed to be okay so uh, the next one sorry cuz I saw an extra I don't know how did that happen okay so <coughs> okay save it minimize it and let's continue so <coughs> so that's the case so when we have having all these things said I actually what I did uh, for my uh, class I actually made this syntax work using using defined statements so the syntax that you see doesn't exist in in C language I cannot say integer pointer to do this to make this thing work using few defined statement I actually made it work and wrote a program so they can actually see it's running so they understand how it works but because C language is a language of shorthanding which is writing stuff in very least amount of characters that you want they say we're not gonna call it pointer that's too long like Pascal we don't want to do that so what they did they actually presented pointer by an asterisk so what happened is that they say instead of saying integer pointer what I what I would say over here is integer asterisk PTR so integer pointer PTR double pointer PTR and therefore be aware that that the asterisk actually belong to the to the uh, to the type and not the pointer so together these two mean double pointer never call that an asterisk that's a double pointer do we understand this all right now that we have this where they said okay so address of is a big thing so I'm gonna uh, fix that too therefore I'm gonna say address of in C I will present it by an ampersand therefore I can actually say DPTR is to equal to address of DVAR and that actually uh, uh, makes my life easier so I don't have to actually write uh, 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 address of and then they said what do I do with target of they presented it again with an asterisk so what happens is that if I put the target asterisk before a pointer's name it actually becomes target of DPTR that actually uh, shows its uh, uh, target of so target of and pointer are both presented by, uh, by asterisk how to identify and not to get confused this is how we do so if the asterisk comes after a type it means a type pointer so integer pointer employee pointer if you have the asterisk coming after an employee it means you have an employee pointer we're okay with this right okay and then so so essentially if I want to create an integer pointer I put integer pointer PTR double pointer PTR or because it was C language struct employee pointer EPTR but of course you know that in C++ we don't put the struct we don't need it now if asterisk comes in front of a variable as a unary operator it means target of so if it's postfix after a type it means that types pointer if it comes before a un as a unary operator before the variables name it means the variable is of type pointer and I want to go to target of it so if a 
is equal to asterisk p it means a is set to target of p which is po p is a pointer and a is a variable or if i say target of t is x it means t is a pointer and x is a variable or if i say a is set to b asterisk asterisk b it is essentially a is equal to b multiply by so when the asterisk makes sense that means multiply so if i say a is equal to b asterisk asterisk d the first one is multiplication and the second one is target of c therefore i have variable variable multiply by target of a pointer or if i say <coughs> e is equal to target of m multiplied by c multiplied by c it's essentially uh, uh e is set to uh E is a variable, M is a pointer, and C over here are both uh, variables. Uh, are we, do we understand what asterisks mean and how we can actually represent things with it? So yeah, so this was what I actually, what, what I do start teaching when I'm doing actually uh, IPC 144. Um, so, <clears throat> next thing, pointers and arrays. What are pointers and arrays? Things that we need to understand about them. So essentially, when you are dealing with arrays and, uh, and pointers, the thing is that when you, when you create a single variable, you know that it's actually in, at one piece of, like you have four bytes and it's sitting right over there. When you have a pointer, that pointer sits somewhere in memory and then you actually point to it and life is beautiful and we know all these things and the double and all those good stuff we have. So you already know this and we've already talked about it. We know what it is. But what do we do when I actually say integer AR5? If I say integer AR5, five integers back to back will be placed in memory. And then after that, there will be a pointer. So I'm, of course, you're going to say AR3, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to put it in the third one. We know that there's no problem. But how it's actually implemented is that you have a constant integer pointer somewhere. And that integer pointer is pointing to the beginning of the array. So therefore, when you say integer AR5, AR is a pointer pointing to five integers somewhere in memory. Therefore, if you say target of AR, it actually sets the very first argument of the array and is equivalent to AR0. If you say AR2 is 444, four, four, it's going to put it in 444, four, four, which is equivalent to target of AR plus 2, um, so that's it actually overrides that 444 four, four, so it becomes 555 five, five. so this is how arrays work do we understand this and from this notation we need to understand that when you add one to a pointer please take a look at this whoa not that look at this so when you add two to a pointer it doesn't add the the integer two to ar what the compiler is going to do it's going to first take a look at the pointer over here see what type of a pointer it is in our case it's an integer so because it's an integer the it knows the size of target is four because the size of target is four when you say add two to ar it means add the address of two integers therefore it multiplies two by four and the address will be added by eight instead of two that's pointer arithmetic so when you add one or reduce one two or from a pointer the size of that pointer will be added or reduced from the pointer do we understand this and that was the beginning now let's go to op345 now that we have this let's go to oop345 so as i mentioned Pointers are um, names of the variables or individual pointers that you have. So all these things will actually work properly. I can actually say name A, B, A, V. And what I do over here, when you initialize an array to series of values, after initialization, of course, you know that I can do this too. 
okay if you initialize the variable to an array to a value it sets the very first ones to the values that you receive and everything else becomes zero so if I do something like this the array will be filled with garbage as soon as I do this it's got to be set to far that and the rest of it will be all null. do we understand this and because of that using the uh, universal type of in initialization if you put an empty curly bracket into it that's the quickest way to set the whole memory to zero so if I say target of a is uh, print target of a what's going to get printed over there will be far that let me actually run this hmm I'm getting an error message why is that redefinition of oh there we go so what is this what is J O W let's make it John <laughs> what does that mean anyways so yeah so now let's start again all right so having this code I will uh, this is set then this one is this it, it, the line number five and six are identical so if you do it like this or you do it as number six it means I have adjust the length of my array to the value so over here J will be four and B will be five characters long okay and in here I'm saying six I'm putting five which means the sixth one will be zero now uh, and that's that so if I print target of a obviously two is going to get printed target of a plus two it goes it it starts from a adds two therefore it stands before 40 40 is going to get printed and if I say a 20 some garbage is going to come out which is someone else's memory I don't know where if I wanted to write into it then it would have actually uh, fail on it now just to understand what a pointer is the name so because uh, the, um, a, a literal value that you put in the in your uh, the literal value that you're putting inside your code is actually an array somewhere you can actually put that one at the left side of an index and what happens it actually uh, sets the ch to uh, fardad I which is zero so it's going to be F F is going to get printed and it keeps going like that so as you see any type of address you put left at left side of an index operator index will actually act with it and it's going to actually um, access the values of that uh, uh, location and uh, I've never done this but I think this would work too if I actually say C out uh, hello probably H is going to get printed over here so uh, let's do it there we go and that's my H okay so any type of address you put in front of an asterisk it means go to the target of it and any address you put behind an index operator it means uh, again go to the address uh, using this uh, the uh, the index do we understand this Wait, how can um, CH hold for that? CH doesn't hold for that. It only holds holds the. Oh, the okay. At okay. This, in the, this is an this is an address from that. So the first one is F, then the next one is going to be A, then it's going to be R, and it keeps going like that. Okay. Okay. All right. Just uh, just letting you, letting you know that if name is a pointer. The literal far that is a pointer to somewhere um, in memory that you can access it that's the way you can do string copy out of it uh, so that's that so that's uh, a dash pointers all right next thing pointer arithmetic okay so 
again pointers are just variables if I say integer pointer integer pointer 400 it means now P is pointing to 400th uh, byte in memory that's what it's going to do um, and printing the unsigned value out of that one would essentially print the 400 so if I actually run this pro not this program copy paste sorry save and get out okay so stop and let's run it again okay so okay so if I print the answer okay just a second stop Ten. all right so as I was saying now it's 400 and this one is gonna hold the values over here the first will be 20 30 40 60 and the rest will be zero so if I say C out assign unsigned P 400 is gonna get printed if I say Q is equal to 400, the same thing. But if I add 1 to P over here, because P is a pointer to an integer, 4 will be added to 400, where Q is a regular integer. If I add 1 to it, 1 will be added to it. So as you see, that's 404. The other one is 401. Do we understand this? And it is because of this fact that I can actually put A, that is the address of the 50 integers, into P. P will actually point where P is. And if I say, what is the target of A? So treat A as a pointer. Or say P0, treat P as an array. They are both exactly the same and identical with absolutely no difference. And uh, same thing over here. So if, uh, if I, I can actually show the value of P and then I can add 1 to P and I can get keep going to uh, traverse through the values one by one and uh, I'll be done so uh, that explains what what pointer arithmetic is are we okay with this wait so what is P holding the first line P is holding the address what is inside a which is address of those 50 characters see P is equal to a so P no, like in the first line in four line four I have no yeah. idea. Four hundredth byte in my computer. I don't know what is okay. what's in it. I just pointed somewhere into my memory. So I put a pure address in there. <laughs> Very oh, okay. bad thing to do. If I say target of P is equal to something, I don't know what's going to happen to my computer. So I'm not going to do it. Because <laughs> I don't know what's in 400. Because usually when you look at the, the, the memory, uh, like usually memory is like this so um, a memory is essentially like it's like an endless loop when you look at it so it looks like something like this it starts from address zero goes to the end of memory and then comes back in so this is address zero and this is the biggest size of memory that you have at the end if you pass that one it comes back on zero an operating system is usually sitting somewhere around somewhere around here okay so this is the memory that you have that and you are using so when I say 400 it's probably somewhere around here that is sitting on the operators and I don't want to screw it up and Windows I, it's if it's a good if, it, if I did it on Linux in two seconds it's gonna do a segmentation fault and segmentation fault essentially means you're out of your segment but in here I don't know what it's gonna do usually uh, Visual Studio creates its own protective uh, simulation of memory and does everything in itself so you don't touch your computer's memory or uh, I don't want to risk it are we okay with this hopefully yep all right so so that's that so this is the pointer arithmetic so essentially, uh, like I, I used to write code like this, 
So for string copy, you do while target of destination plus plus is equal to target of source plus plus. So what happens is that when it it gets the two pointers, so it gets the, the addresses of the de destination and target, so it knows where they are in memory, then it puts the target of source, which is the first one, into target of destination, which is the second one. And then after these two are done, it adds one to this and that. And the re if there is and it keeps doing that until the result of this assignment is zero, which is the end of the string. So that becomes a string copy. Or if I want to do str len, I can do this. But on G++, this will be will not be an out without a warning. And like if you try to compile it the way you submit your code to us, it it's not going to allow you to do this because this thing is a little too freaky to the compiler and to people who want to actually work with it so it doesn't know if you're actually making a mistake which means did you want it to do this and you did did you want it to do this and you did that by mistake because of this it gives you a warning and that warning is what we don't want uh, are we okay with this Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a little freaky, and I want you to, to, uh, to bear with me and try to um, um, kind of walk with me through it. So, say I have an array. And... Okay, so this is what I have. I have an array called Fred, and I want to. Um, how do you write Frederick? I hope this is right. I don't know. I just wrote something. Anyway, so I have it. I have an array, and it has that one over there. Okay, and um, I have uh, um, a, a constant character pointer, and this constant par character pointer, I want to search. Um, through that array of mine and make this pointer point to let's say the one that starts with e so in here i'm gonna this, this is the character pointer and i want it to point somewhere in frederick so i want it to point to this one or this one or this one or this one so do you so i want to say i want to go one by one through the source see which one is e and i stop over there make the chptr to point to e do we understand do we understand my objective okay and say i want to let me just nullify it so i don't get uh Warning. Let's say I want to do that in a function. If I want to do that in a function, how would I create that function? So I have to, I'm going to say if, so I'm going to have if, here my search function is going to go, it's going to return uh, a boolean obviously, and in here I'm going to say see out uh, chptr, um, and so it's going to print whatever I have. I'm going to um, Yeah, it's going to print everything after whatever the ch is going to be. Um, other, otherwise, I'm going to say else uh, um, c out. I'm going to say uh, not found. <clears throat> so that's, that's what I want to do. I want to write that function. So this function of mine, what I want it to do is to go through a uh, character string so uh, so essentially my function is going to be boolean search in here it goes through a character string so i have a constant character pointer source that is going to search into <coughs> and so let's not call this one source i'm going to call it str and i'm going to yeah str is better so source it's going to go through the source and search for it then in here i want to be able to pass the address of chptr to set it to something i cannot just put over here const character pointer 
I cannot just with constant character pointer PTR because if I do that then I'm passing this thing using value so it's not gonna set it back it's as if you are doing something like this if I say integer uh, void set to 10 if I have this function written over here if I say over here integer val and I say over here val is equal to 10 and in main of mine and in main of mine if I write over here int main and in here as I, I write integer i and I say uh, set to 10 and I put over here I and I'm gonna go see out I don't fall for it I want you to look at the code that I have and I'm gonna say what is the out what is the printout at line 9 please tell me what is the printout at line 9 Perfect. Three, four people answered. It's, it's zero, obviously, because I is a local variable. It has nothing to do with that. But as soon as I do like this, integer pointer val, and I'm going to put over here, address of, uh, sorry, target of val is equal to 10. Now, what is the, and in here I'm passing address of I to it. Now, what's going to be the outcome of this uh, output of line 9? 10 obviously so we are all okay with it so now if I do it like this you'll see that that is 10 okay so <clears throat> let's comment that okay and uncomment this one and continue so now in here in this search function of mine I want to set the chptr over here to something so this search of mine I know I'm gonna pass str there's no problem that is passed but in here if I say chptr the value of the pointer is gonna go up that is null I want its address so in here I have to say address of chptr to be able to set to th that pointer to what I want and obviously I want us over here for example search for an e so in here I'm gonna say search for an e it is in SDR and put the address in CHPTR and tell me if you were successful or not. If I do that because I'm passing the address of pointer, if I had an integer to convert it to a pointer, I add an asterisk so it becomes an integer pointer. Now that I have a constant character pointer, if I want the address of a constant character pointer passed, I have to make it constant character pointer pointer. PTR. Therefore, this PTR now holds the address of a constant character pointer. And now I can pass over here character ch to, to look for it. And now I can actually write my code. I can uh, write over here something like boolean found is set to false. Then here I'm going to say while not found and target of source which is essentially to see if I'm getting to the end or not. Now I can say target of PTR is set to source. And then after that, I'm going to say found is true. And in here, I'm going to return found. Do we understand this syntax? So this is called a pointer to a pointer. So essentially, if I want to change the content of a pointer using its address, obviously I have to add an asterisk to it to do so. And when I run this program now, when it actually prints it out, it's actually going to say chptr. Well, why is it doing Frederick? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to write an if statement. If target of source is equal to ch, <laughs> sometimes I write stuff that is kind of funny. Okay, so now it's better. So 
Now if I run the thing, now if I run the thing, oh, I forgot to add one to it. What's wrong with me? Endless loop source plus plus. Now it's going to be Ed Edric, so that's going to be printed over there, okay? Do we understand this? And do we understand what our mistakes were? All right. So now let's say, Melissa and Ali, are we good? Wait, so I have trouble, like, getting the, um, like, incrementing... Like uh, so yeah. Okay, so let's let's. I like it. Let's take a look at it. So first of all, this is source, right? So let's actually picture it and see what happens. Okay. So this is my array. Okay, that I have over here, and in this array of mine, I have the Frederick thingy. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but it's not like that it's actually like this we know that so it's fred rick i'm not going to write this stuff in it that's too difficult okay but we know you you get the message right yeah okay so when you say str so this is essentially str over here pointing to that correct mm -hmm. okay and then in here you have another thing <laughs> you have another variable over here and this variable is called that is actually oh no not like that so this variable is called chptr and this is your str are we okay with this mm -hmm. okay and then let me make the size of this one a little bigger so we can actually see what we are doing 20 30. 